Listen, I get it. You haven't tried ChatGPT yet, and at this point, we are so far down the road that you're afraid to admit it. Hey, buddy, I know how those conversations go. Oh, I love this. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love that show. Yeah. 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 You guys try this corn? Yeah. Now, I won't tell anybody. We're going to get started with ChatGPT from scratch here. If you have used ChatGPT before, send this video to your colleagues because those people aren't half the nerds that you are, okay? Okay, ChatGPT, free to get started. Go to chat.openai.com, hit sign up. Just pop in your little email address, accept the terms of surrender for the singularity, and you're ready to go. Now, with the free flavor of ChatGPT, you're going to get some downtime. At peak times, especially, you're not gonna be able to use it. It's just gonna lock you out. Really annoying. But here's the thing. Today, we're just gonna use GPT-4, and that is the newest model. To get it, you have to pay the $20 a month. You can do all of these things on the old model. It's just not gonna work as well. And frankly, I'm making this video in May of 23. What the old models do isn't really that relevant going forward. So I'm using what is called ChatGPT+. I pay $20 a month for it, and I get that time back many times over. So how is ChatGPT useful for accountants? Hmm, let's take a look. Okay, somebody just sent me this balance sheet in PDF format, but buddy, I need it in Excel because I'm an accountant. And if you've ever used the Acrobat like export to Excel thing, you'd know just how sh that is. So all I'm gonna do here, a little copy pasta, drag this down across the, scroll darn it, drag this down across the balance sheet, hit copy. In ChatGPT, I'm gonna say, present this balance sheet in table format, paste it in. Ooh, look at that nice formatting. Okay, that is done. My assets look to equal my liabilities and equity. I'm gonna copy this whole thing, paste that sucker right into Excel. Now, security sidebar. Meet my eyeline, Jim. Wait just one minute, Scooter. I'm not chucking my client data into this robot machine. Three things to keep in mind. By default, your prompts in ChatGPT are used to train the model. So when you submit prompts, they use those prompts to make the user experience better, but you can turn that off now. So if I go down to settings, under data controls, you can toggle this off to not save your chat history and not use those prompts to train the model. But you'll notice I still have it turned on and that is because the chat history is helpful for me. And security consideration number two, anonymized information is not generally considered personal sensitive information. In fact, under GDPR, under HIPAA rules, under California's rules, if you anonymize that information, it doesn't fall under the same regulations. So that is removing names, removing street addresses, removing any other things that would make it able to be tied back to a specific person or company. You'll notice when I copy pasted the goods into ChatGPT, I didn't grab the company name. And for the purposes of what I'm doing here, I don't need the company name. So the information that went in there was anonymized. Third security consideration, even if you have this setting turned on, so it does train the model, and you did accidentally put some personal information in there, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, actually anonymizes the information before it goes in to be trained in the model. So somehow if a social security number, or an EIN or something like that did get into a prompt, on their side, they should be anonymizing it when it gets trained. Now, I don't really wanna rely on that, but kind of guiding principle here, just don't put any personally identifiable information in here. And in most of these workflows, it's not hard to just remove that person's name or their address or the company name. It's just a matter of not grabbing that sensitive bit. Okay, moving past the security scaries, I just got a bank statement from a client, but that doesn't help me import those transactions into the accounting system, gosh darn it. Turns out GPT, really good at grabbing bank transactions from bank statements. I'll show you. Here's the offending bank statement. Sutton Bank, old-fashioned innovation. You see we've got all these transactions down here, but buddy, I need the CSV. I'm not about to type that stuff in, you heckin' me? I'm gonna copy all of these transactions out of here. Note that I'm not copying like the account number and the company name and all that. I'm just grabbing the transactions and these are like merchant descriptions, which are the same for everybody. I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna pop back over to Chaz here, inside joke if you saw the last chat GPT video, and I'm gonna say, here are some lines from a bank statement. I need a CSV of the transactions with a date column, details column, an amount, positive for paid in, negative for paid out, and balance. Those are the only bits that I wanna get back. I paste all those goodies in. Look at that little guy go. It gives you that data back in a CSV that you can now save and import into your accounting system. Now. I could copy and paste this into Excel and save it as a CSV. Another thing you can do is you can open up Notepad, drop all this text in there, and then just save it as you know transactions.csv, for example. And then that's a file you're gonna be able to import straight into your accounting system. Neato, huh? Whew, gonna save me some pain. Where was this when I was like in my first years, right? Okay, sidebar here on GPT's 
context limits. So GPT can only handle so much information at a time. You can't chuck a limitless amount of text in there. Right now, the limit that ChatGPT enforces on the way you work with GPT-4 here, it works out to about 3000 words is the limit. And when you frame that as like accounting transactions, it means you can't chuck in like a thousand transactions at a time, but doing this, I've never had a problem with putting a page worth of transactions in at a time, even on like pretty dense credit card statements that are like legal length. I select the whole thing, all the section headings, whatever, it just figures that out. And I haven't run into any context limits with that yet. But just know if you got a huge amount of information, just break it up into pieces. Little bite-sized morsels. Okay, now let's say you're doing some bookkeeping. You're getting close to the end. You get to the end and you've got like these 10 transactions that are like, WTF mate, I don't have any idea where these things came from. Time to get to Googling. Now check this out. This is a really cool aspect of ChatGPT. The notion of quote unquote, prompt engineering. This is what the nerds call it. But the idea is I could build a really cool prompt and share it with you and vice versa. You build out this kind of mega prompt and share it around, anybody can use it. So check out this big sweaty prompt. And it's for like solving this situation where you've got these transactions left over and you're not sure what they are. You are Transaction Bud, a helpful, concise utility for providing additional information about ambiguous bank transactions. This is your main function. I will give you lists of bank transactions, and I want you to provide a table with the following the name should link Merchant to the company's names, landing your page. Best guess at the Merchant, the bank when the payment was made via a service like PayPal, only show a zero the merchant to 100% rating service. of how category you are a general you business accounting category, you U.S. tax reporting category, categorized to your own country of choice. Now, you don't have to write all this. You can copy paste it. You can steal it from your friend, save it, reuse it. So I'm gonna drop this prompt in. Transaction bud at your service. First, please share the general location of the client in question and what type of business it is to better target the most likely merchant. I'm gonna say Salem, Oregon, internet think boy. Got it. Paste a list of transactions below in any format. Okay, so I got some transactions here that are actually pretty vague. I'm gonna paste them in. This is just like what you would get on your bank statement line. Look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is giving you what it thinks the merchant is, and that is a hyperlink to the merchant website. It's telling you how confident it is with this determination, the general type of thing that it is, and even a little explainer of background about what this company does. And this is 100% correct. How cool is that? So that big sweaty prompt that I either made you watch or in the edit decided to like chop way down because it was too long and uncomfortable. You can copy paste that prompt, use it as many times as you want. Share it with your friends, share it with your mom. And it's a great example of how you could build cool assets that are reusable within ChatGPT. That's a big brain move right there. Pretty cool, right? Hey, have you shared this video with your colleagues yet? Don't hide it under a bushel basket. Okay, a couple more things specifically with Excel. Oh no, not again. It does this sometimes. Sorry, hang on. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta just, AI can do this. Sometimes you gotta just, gotta unplug it from the wall. Just gotta unplug it from the wall and give it a few minutes sometimes. And when it comes back, it's usually cool about it. So that helpful tidbit actually, courtesy of today's sponsor, Tech guru. Hey, are you thinking about the singularity? Worried robots are gonna start getting jealous of your family time? It's happening. Well, let me tell you, if they end up taking over, I'm gonna make sure I wanna have a solid IT solution sorted out. And tech guru, they work just with accounting firms. Snowflakes like me. For teams five and up, they understand what I do. They understand what busy season means. They understand I gotta use sh software just because I do stuff with the government. Now ChatGPT is just one example of AI stuff, but AI stuff is kicking off everywhere and it's adding new complexities to security and how we manage client information. And the last thing you need is some major accounting celebrity telling you how to manage your client data with AI apps, right? So. Make sure you got an expert on your team, somebody that you can trust. Get in touch with Tech Guru. They're gonna hop on a call with you. They'll talk through stuff, no commitments, just, just palling around and talking IT. What do you got to lose? Check them out in the link in the video description. Okay, couple more things specifically with Excel. Looks like, looks like we've gotten past our little moment we were having here. First, if you have been around this channel long, you know one of my greatest fears is pivot tables. Don't judge me. We all have our phobias, but it's one of those things you don't wanna to admit to because accountants love flexing pivot tables on people. Like, 
cool, bro. Of all those life skills to have. But ChatGPT, if I gotta ask questions, it's not gonna make fun of me. So one of the ways I use this most is to explain things to me that I don't understand. So I can say, I don't know much about Excel pivot tables. Explain them to me like I'm 15 years old. To be clear, I'm not 15 years old. Though somebody did tell me the other day that they're waiting to learn about, Never mind. Imagine we got a big box of Legos. Off to a good start, okay. Okay, pour all your Legos in and say, hey, I wanna know how many red bricks I have and also how many square ones. Pivot table then quickly sorts everything and gives you the answers. So you've been keeping a record of all the games you've been playing with your friends over the year. How many games of Fortnite you won. Now we're talking. Okay, so practical, like helpful explanation. But what if I actually wanna make one? Why don't we give me some sample data about my Fortnite results I can plug into a pivot table. <laughs> friends involved. Good one. Whoops, that first one was empty. Okay, there we go. 10 kills. Okay. From this data, you can use a pivot table to answer questions like how many games did I win in each mode? What are my average kills? Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna copy paste this into Excel. Give me some fresh sheets here. Okay, sick data table. But I wanted to tell me how to actually do it. Okay, how do I actually make the pivot table in Excel? Okay, select my data. Go to insert and click on pivot table. Okay, turbo, slow down. Hang on, I gotta make my table. Okay, select the data, insert, pivot table. Yes. Oh, you're still going? Okay, Configure okay. My pivot drag table. game mode into okay. the rows box. Drag placement into the values box. Sum of placement. I failed settings. Count. Cool pivot table, bro. Moving on. One last way that I use this with Excel that's pretty handy is making sweaty, sweaty formulas. So let's keep working with our Fortnite data table here. And let's say I wanted a list of the unique number of kills that I've had in a game. Getting like a list of unique things in Excel is always kind of a pain. So let's say I copy pasted that data into Excel. Write me a formula to create a list of unique number of kills. Unique D10 to D2. This formula will return a list of unique values found in the cells to represent kills data. Here's what it does. Okay, really? Really though, the blowback from my Excel skills in this video is just gonna be outrageous. Ooh, look at that. Wow, look at that one little formula and it did all those. Now, other sweaty stuff I've done here, if you've ever struggled with like X lookup versus index match, same bro, same. You can even like copy paste your data from Excel into chat GPT and say like, this starts at A1, write the formula with the exact references to do this and that. Or copy the data from tab one and tab two and say, I wanna look up this and that. Give me a formula to do that. Your main limitation is gonna be like the total volume of context you can put in there at once. If you put in more than it'll allow, it'll tell you. But if you ever got stuck on a formula or we're working through some things, opened up a spreadsheet that your colleague wrote and you didn't understand what that formula meant. <laughs> Never happened to me, but if it happened to you, you could copy paste that formula in there with some example data. Obviously don't give away your client's lucky charms, but then it'll give you this big like helpful explanation step-by-step -step of how that formula works. How cool is that? Another idea alert, then ask it how to improve upon it and write a Teams message to send to your teammate, specifically with the goal of making them feel small. How's that? Pretty rad, right? Hey, I've got some more chat GPT content for accountants coming. Be sure to hit the old subscribe aroo button to get notified when that stuff drops. I know you already shared this with your colleague, not the Excel function, this video. And I run a daily podcast for accountants where we actually talk about AI stuff quite a bit. I'm gonna link one of my favorite videos right up here for you because I know you will love it. Toodaloo! Oh, hmm. Oh. You guys try this porn? <laughs>